Hey folks, I hope you guys are doing really well and today there's something I want to bring to you that you may have some interest in. It's small, it's green, it's very very lovable but it's not Kermit the Frog. It's the Trace Elliot Elf and we're gonna uh, play through this amp with some different basses today and actually check it out and see what it's all about. The first thing about this amp is, is it's really tiny and it's really very very light it comes in at um, just under three quarters of a kilogram which is not very much at all and you can see that it uh, would easily fit in a gig bag however it's still rated at 200 watts into 4 ohms and it has the regular uh, controls the input a gain control a bass, mid and treble volume it's got a headphone jack, which uh, it's worth pointing out that it's a, a full-size uh, headphone jack, not the mini one. Around the back, you have your power input, the on-off switch. You have your speaker output, which uh, in this size amp, it's going to be a jack because uh, you can't fit a bigger connector there. And you have a DI output with a ground lift switch which allows you to connect to um, your recording gear, your front of house PA for support. Um, there's a small grill on the top and on the side and there's a small fan in there that uh, keeps things very very cool and there's a little bit of a warning on the top that tells you not to block the ventilation and that's good advice but you can see all in all it's a very tiny little package so Let's uh, let's see what this sounds like with a few different basses, eh? So sitting here on top of a 12-inch uh, and horn Galleon Kruber cab, absolutely diminutive. It's tiny. It's very light. It's very small. Having said that, it's built very robustly. It's a nice metal case. It's got a pretty funky green colour, which looks great. And I'm just going to run this flat with uh, P-Bass with flat wound strings. <laughs> sound a fairly good sound just flat um, I'm gonna go through some of these knobs again a little bit later but I'm just gonna bump up the bass a bit maybe cut the mids and the treble back very pleasing sound it's not it's not a honky mid-range it's more of a slightly uh, lower mids mid-range which fills out the um, this type of bass very nicely and the sound is quite punchy so let's try um, something like uh, another bass that's widely used which is the jazz bass and see how, how it handles that eh? This is a um, USA 5 string active deluxe jazz bass. Um, and it's got the low B string. And it'd be interesting to see how the amp handles that, that B string. distinctly and very clear and this is one place where a lot of um, amplifiers like this with a d-class power section uh, the very early ones had uh, a bit of a woolly sound uh, uh, right at the bottom and uh, that they kind of turned some people off them for a while I think but I think they've nailed it with this one it actually sounds pretty good down low <laughs> It's 
got that very Trace Elliott sort of sound uh, still, which is good to see. And it's really quite punchy. <laughs> a single 8 ohm speaker that would be putting out 130 watts into the 8 ohms into 4 ohms it's 200 watts so if you had two cabinets or a 4 ohm cabinet it would be that little bit louder and I think it's uh, more than good enough to keep up with a normal acoustic drum kit I think it would be great for rehearsals small gigs maybe even medium gigs and you could use it on big gigs if you had support from the front of the house which you can do through the XLR out on the back. Uh, another popular bass uh, I think is the Stingray so we'll plug that in next and see how that uh, comes up on the amp. Now a couple of features of the of the amp on this gain control is firstly it shows you when there is a signal present and you can adjust the gain green. This LED here is just uh, to indicate that the power is on. As you, uh, if you're adjusting the EQ, it actually uh, feeds into the gain too. So if you're boosting, say, the bottom end or the mids, it's, it's going to trigger that compressor. And how do we trigger the compressor? Um, so in other words, if you're turning the, the bass or mids or anything up here, you would have to turn your gain down to compensate if you don't want to alter the compressor settings. When we turn this gain up, we start to get the compression kicking in, and you can see the light flashes amber at that stage. And in the manual it says, it's got three stages. It's the, the natural sound without compression in the lower settings. In the sort of middle, it's, um, it's activating the compressor. And as you turn the gain up, it activates it, uh, squashes the signal more and more. If you go very high on the gain, it kind of starts to activate uh, an overdrive distortion. sound I don't uh, personally have a use for that sound some of you may have that but uh, the interesting fact about this amp is for its uh, it's quite tiny size it, it's actually quite loud uh, it's unbelievably loud for uh, the size that it is it, it belies the um, the size of the box that it's in you, you when you first turn it on and play through it and crank it a bit you can't believe how much how much sound you're getting from such a tiny little box that uh, that weighs less than a kilo uh, let's have a look at a couple of other things and I'll just uh, turn the amp off and bring it closer to the camera so you can see. So what I like about the amp is uh, firstly the size. It is really tiny. I know I've said that many times but it, uh, it bears repeating. The other thing that uh, I like is that the headphone jack is your, your normal jack size, not the mini jack. Also, I like that the power cord is your standard type kettle cord arrangement. It's not some sort of uh, funky proprietary P3 
power cord. It's just a normal one, so you can get them anywhere. You know, you, you obviously have a few in your bag for other purposes and a few spares, so you're never going to be without that. Um, and it sounds really, really good for such a small amplifier. It's got that sort of Trace Elliott vibe about it. They've done a good job on, uh, on turning out this tiny little lamp that puts out that much power. The things that I don't like, and they're very few to be honest, and one is the DI does have a ground lift, which is very useful, but this is always post EQ. So any changes you make to your EQ settings are going to translate into whatever the that output is plugged into. So that's fine when you're recording. Um, if you use extreme settings on the amp, it could give your front of house sound engineer a few headaches. So it would be nice to have a pre-post switch also, and they may include that in further versions. But you have to remember, it's a tiny little amp, and there's not a lot of real estate here for, for much else, right? Um, it, it, it does sound great, and for what it is, if you're not playing like super loud gigs with uh, super loud bandmates, you can get away with this. Just throw it in your gig bag, um, and just stick it on top of your box. And there, there are boxes for it. There's a two, two by eight inch cabinet, and there's I think a one ten cabinet, and there's a little recess that the head fits into, so you can't drag it off with your cord if you walk away with your bass. Um, so that's nice. And they're super light also, so you have this tiny little rig that fits in any vehicle um, that you can take anywhere that will do most of, uh, most of the gigs that you will probably do. Now, the other thing is um, you need to have a quarter inch jack speaker lead. Don't get that confused with an instrument lead because you should never use an instrument lead for your speakers and vice versa a speaker lead for you to plug in your instrument. Um, plugging in a speaker lead for your instrument will probably get noisy. Plugging an instrument lead here may damage the amplifier so keep that in mind. Uh, you're better off to label them and mark them. But uh, kudos to Trace for coming up with uh, and re-entering the market after a few years with uh, such an interesting small product that sounds pretty good it's, uh, as I said, very easy to carry around. You could keep this in your gig bag even as a spare amp, even if you have a bigger amp. It's, uh, it's a very, very good unit. I've used it at a small rehearsal. It, uh, it came up very, very well. It sounded good. Uh, plenty of punch, plenty of volume. No problem with that at all. So if you're looking for something, and there's, <laughs> there's a big craze today with... Uh, micro amplifiers and I mean bass players have never really had it much better than this um, you know tiny little amps that put out uh, pretty decent power in such a small and light package I mean if you just go back a few years we were carrying much bigger amps and you go back a few years beyond that and we were all carrying sort of uh, mainly valve amps which were very big and very heavy and back breaking to lug around so we would be really happy that uh, this type of product is uh, hitting the market and there's a lot of people that make uh, micro amps and I think they're a lot of them are equally as good though I haven't tried them all but this one is definitely worth checking out the price in Australia I think you can pick these up for sub $450 which is not a lot of money for a 200 watt amp go check one out and uh, throw me a comment and let me know what you think but uh, I found this is quite useful, uh, particularly given that it's such a small package. In the meantime, keep making music, keep having fun, keep playing bass, and uh, talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.